Okay, before we start to explain how to light the scene, I would like to make clear some concepts about lightning, both in V-Ray and 3ds Max. The first thing we have to take into account is the scale of the scene. This is very important because the scale will affect directly a lot of parameters like the intensity of lights and uh, a lot of other things on cameras. The way to solve this in Max is very simple. We just have to click here and go to Unit Setup. In this first area, we'll define how 3ds Max will uh, display the size of the things. And in this second option, we'll tell Max what kind of uh, units we'll be using for the calculation for many things like physics, uh, lights, and uh, other things. As you notice, I put both in centimeters, that's the way I work. Here I have a very simple example of how light will vary about, uh, depending on the scale. And, uh, and what I have here is a hollow box of around uh, one square meter in, in size. And inside I have a V-Ray light. Uh, later on we'll be seeing what and how to manage these kind of lights. Now, what I want to show you is that if I click F9 to make a render, now you'll see how light comes out pretty nice here. Uh, and as you see, the light is uh, taken all over the box. And if I go and put a little more intensity, we'll have a very straightforward response of the light here. But what would happen if we made a bad setup of the scales uh, on which 3ds Max will be working on this scene? And just uh, as, as an example, I have here uh, a pre-prepared pre uh, scene that we'll be reviewing now here. Okay, here we go. Okay, let's see, something's happened uh, now. What would happen if we, instead of having a one meter box, we have uh, one with half kilometer? Well, to be more precise, like 300 meters, that it's more or less what the size of this box is. And I'll get rid of the first box. And this is what would happen if I just thought that this box uh, measures one meter. If I hit F9 here, uh, the results will be completely different of what I had originally. Eh, there's no light at all. If I'm not aware of, of these kind of things, what I would do, probably, is to take the intensity as, f as high as I can, so we can we can get some some kind of uh, light uh, in the scene as you can see here as you can see uh, we're really overexposing a lot the area where the light is but we're not getting any kind of light uh, in the walls as uh, when the when the scale was correct so probably what I would have to do is to make a, a even more higher the, the intensity parameter in this light to see if we can get some light on the walls. And as you can see, the, the number of the, the intensity of the light is very high and we really can't see any light uh, bouncing in the wall. And of course it will bring us a lot of problems, a lot of troubles here, and that's why we have to be very careful on how we manage the scale of the scene and the affections of it. Okay. What I would like to show you now, it's which are the lights I'm used to work with, uh, how I use it, and why I prefer to work with them. Now, if I hit F9 here, uh, we'll see the li the scene lighted with the default lights that is coming from Max. But I'll be showing you each one of the lights I'm using here. The first one is uh, a spotlight, one of the most known uh, lights in Max. I'll hit F9 so you can see the result of this light. And the result is always as expected, nothing special. This doesn't mean that being a simple light, it's a bad light to work with. The truth is that I use a lot this kind of light because it lets me uh, focus the light on a specific area. Other type of lights, just like those on V-Ray or the photometric lights in Max, can give you a bit of uh, fall off in the sides and with this one you get a very precise way to put the light exactly where we want. There are some backdrops also in this light, just for example here. Uh, for example the attenuation here, uh, you, can, you don't have a lot of attenuation here from the, where the object is close or far from the light. The other one is that I don't have much control on the shadows. 
but it's a really really good uh, light and a very good tool for focusing light on a specific part of your scene. The second light I would like to show you it's it's a photometric light. These lights now are default here in 3ds Max 2. I'll hit F9 and as you can see the result is completely different from the spotlight and mainly because this light has a specific attenuation that works a lot like in the real world. I use this one mostly for having a more realistic and more photoreal results in my scenes. And why not also to create a, a basic setup of lights. Also, uh, well, with this one you can control the type of shadow you want to go. You can use um, scanline shadows, mental ray shadows, or if you're working with V-Ray, you should activate the, the V-Ray shadows to work properly. In all the lights which I can use uh, V-Ray shadows, I'll be able to activate this uh, parameter that is area shadow that will let me get uh, soft shadows. I'll hit F9 so you can see uh, here that uh, the shadows are now softer. I'll try to exaggerate this one. Okay, so this is now the way to control how soft my shadows are in the scene using V-Ray. One of the other lights I would like to show you is it's perhaps the one I use most and it's the, the V-Ray light. And this one is uh, particularly related or linked to its specific size. In the basic light parameters I can manipulate the size of it. And this parameter it's uh, very unique to these kind of lights because I can work on, on its height and width and uh, just as in as in real life the size of the of the light will define the softness that we'll be getting from from the shadows i'll hit f9 so you can see the specific result we'll get with this light i think it's too much intense i'll i'll drop it a little okay now here let's wait a little uh, here you see that the light is very diffuse, the light is very diffuse and will get very, very soft shadows. And also I want to show you how, how tight is this relation with the size and the intensity of the light. I'll make it smaller. And to get more or less the same amount of intensity of light that we had, I have to kick up the value a little. And let's compare the result we have now. Okay, maybe just a little bit more. Now you can see that because I made the light smaller, the shadows will be harder on the edges. And you can see now that uh, the size will be linked with uh, the softness of the shadows and also with the intensity, the final intensity will be linked with its size too. To elaborate a little more, I'll make it smaller and put the intensity up. Okay, now you can see we're getting a lot more harder shadows on the edges. Okay, uh, V-Ray lights have a lot of other parameters. I can make this light not just being planes, I can make them spheres. That way I can, I can simulate a lot better how a light, a light bulb will, would work on real life. I'll turn off this light first and turn on this one, I have this already prepared for you. Let's hit F9 to see what we can get. And just as in the plain light, uh, as smaller the light is, the, the sharpest the shadows will be. I'll take the, the radius as a lot smaller now. And I'll kick the intensity also a lot. F9 again and let's see uh, how the shadow became very hard on the edge. I really recommend that you work a lot with V-Ray lights because they let you control a lot the intensity, the attenuations and how it's related with the softness of the shadows. Most of my scenes are rendered with or are I using V-Ray lights but uh, there's other kind of lights that are important too and I want to show them and it's the sunlight system. This one it's also a exclusive light from V-Ray 
and as the other ones, this uh, kind of light is very related with physical parameters. So if I hit F9, you'll see that I have a very overexposed scene. Why is this? Because mainly when we see an image, we always see it uh, through a sensor, being our eyes or being a photographic camera, or, or any other media that has some sensibility to light. In this specific case, it's our 3ds Max camera, but uh, this camera doesn't have the ability to define how much light we'll get in the camera or how sensible it is to light. So that's why when we are working with the lights that respond like in like in the real world, we would like to have uh, something that catches the light also as expected in in a, in the in the real world and it will be the V-Ray camera. This camera will let us control how much light goes in and how sensible it is to, to the amount of light in the scene. It gets as far as controlling F number or even how sensible is the film here in the ISO value. And I'll hit F9 now with my V-Ray camera and you'll notice immediately that the result it's completely different from what we had. And not just that, now we have uh, a lot of control on how the camera will interpret or will receive the light from, from the scene. This is not the only way to do it. Um, there is another way to do it, um, that it's, um, it's to use an exposimeter. Uh, exposure control uh, here, uh, they, it defines how, how much light will be getting in the camera. Uh, just like uh, in the real world as the cameras has exposed simulators and exposure control. The importance of this is that um, in my San Juan scene I used a sun so uh, if you don't have any of these kind of solutions like the V-Ray camera or the exposure control uh, you will get very very overexposed scenes and you should take care of that later on your project. For those that has been asking myself in the forums or in my email, uh, I really didn't use any kind of linearization or linear, linear pipeline for, for this, this project. The whole linearization pro, pro, uh, pipeline, it's, it's, a, it's a science by its own. And well, maybe in, in, in future parts of the tutorial, I'll be explaining it. But in the, in the light process, I really didn't use any kind of uh, linearization or or gamma compensation or gamma modification at all. Later we talk a little bit more about about this. It looks like uh, we just take a very fast look of the lights on Max and V-Ray, but that's the ones I, I used in in the scene. No more, no more than this. And now let's go to the fun part and see how how I positioned all these lights in the in the in the scene of san juan